Hello and welcome to lesson two of our introduction to Unity. In lesson two we're going to be looking at adding playable characters and how we can import objects and collect objects. So let's take a look a little bit at some of the end result that we're aiming for. So um, that's the wrong Unity. There we go. So this is, is the sort of thing we're aiming for today. If I just press play on this we can see we've got a little capsule in the bottom corner we can see we can move the capsule around and we can walk around and see what's happening and this will not take as long to create. Okay, so let's just get rid of that one. So we've got, this is based on, on our last lesson, we've created some walls, we've got a little capsule. Um, now just to tie this up a little bit before it gets out of hand, I'm going to right click just here. I'm going to create an empty and this is going to be called my walls object. And I'm going to drag all of my wall things inside it. So now I can simply compress that and it's just easy for me to handle. Also it means if I want to move this entire object into a different place I can just drag it in one go. Um, so, so we've got our capsule. Now what we want to do is add some code to make it move. So I'm going to come down to this bottom window and press create C sharp. Now please, once you press this once don't click the mouse button again. I'm going to press C sharp script. It's already ready to be renamed, so I'm not clicking off it. This is really important. And I'm just going to call it move character. Press enter. And now it is named. This object has been created. If you rename it afterwards, so you press enter and, you, and it's just called script one, and then you rename it later, you will break your program and it won't work and it'll get all confused. So don't rename it later. I just see lots of people make this mistake. Um, so I'm going to click on Capsule. Now our Capsule is going to become our player. So I'm just going to drag our code onto our player. Uh, and there it is, it's been added. Now the code doesn't do anything yet. So if I press play, there's nothing there. But I'm going to double click it. Now my version of Unity is being, is being set up for Visual Studio 2017 it will work just fine 2019 or whichever else you're using. So you can see in Unity it's now given us some library files, it's got a start function and it's got an update function and as it says there this will get called every frame that the, your game is running. Okay so first thing we want to do is we want to create a couple of variables. We want to know how fast is our character moving. So I'm creating a public variable, so this means it will be available in the UI, and I'll demonstrate that shortly. I want it to be a floating point, so a number with a decimal point in it. I'm going to call it speed. And I'm going to set it to a default value of, of, zero, of 5. So our character is going to move 5 units per time elapsed, which I'll explain in just a moment. Um, if you're not familiar with this, float, like I just said, is a floating point number, so it's got a decimal point in it. And when we're in the C and Java based languages, um, you always finish it with an F uh, to say that this is a float so that you don't confuse it with something called a double. Um, the other thing I'm going to need is a float called direction. What direction are we heading in? I'm just going to set that to zero for now. Um, doesn't need to be public uh, because it'll get changed within the game, within the code itself. Again, a great thing about Unity is how this is all set up. Um, I'm just going to say if. So I want to do something called if input. This is again why I said I liked Visual Studio or a proper code editor, because if, if you're actually auto filled it in for me. If I put input dot, it's giving me some function, so I can put in get. Okay, so it's then offering me all the things it can have. I want to get key. So I'm going to get what key am I pressing on the keyboard? Um, and again, if you notice that I did an open bracket and it closed it for me. I now need to, I want the up arrow. Um, so I, I want key code dot now if you notice looking down here everything is on there every key on the keyboard it makes it so much easier for you um, if you're not sure why this is easy if you were coding a long time ago you'd have to get the actual code value of what the keyboard's generating so you might have to work in ascii or something okay so i've now got if i press up arrow whatever's between these braces is going to run now to save you watching me type i'm just going to drag some code that i prepared earlier I'll just mention what it's doing through. So we, we get, we're creating something called a direction vector. Now you can be in three directions, X, Y, and Z. Uh, a vector three will hold X, Y, and Z. We want to create, um, so we've got our direction and we're going to transform dot forward. In Unity, 
it knows which way is forward. Your model knows which way is forward as opposed to up. Um, and we're going to multiply our forward position by the speed, which we just set up here, and the time dot delta time. This is how much time has passed between frames. So if your computer is running at 25 frames per second, it's going to work out that time interval. If your computer is running at 150 frames per second, it'll become smoother. It just means that your character will always take the same amount of seconds to walk across the screen. And then we're going to physically transform our position on screen by that direction in our world coordinates. If this is all a bit too much for you, don't worry. All this is going to do is make your character move forwards in a nice, smooth way. So if I just press Control S to save, or I could just press the floppy disk, or I could have gone on File and Save, whichever you find easier. But do make sure you have pressed Save, um, because sometimes you'll forget and then wonder why your code's not working. So if I now go back into Unity, it'll update the code. So it's compiling it. So we can now see that our code's updated. And if I press play, um, I'm just going to split the screen because right now the camera is sat there. So the camera actually can't see our capsule. In fact, if I just bring, in fact, if I'm going to move these around so you can, it's a bit easier to see. Oops, that was the ground. So I'm going to pull the camera back and push the capsule forwards. There we go. So we can see that in view now. So if I just press play, what we should be able to see is our capsule moving forwards. There we go. Now it's going to go straight through the wall because we've not told it to stop at walls yet. We'll come back to that. Okay, so we can now go forwards. We want to go backwards. I can just grab this bit of code. I can paste it. This time I'm going to put down arrow. Now, of course, if you're more of a WASD sort of person, you can use your WASD keys. Just put key code.a, key code.w, etc. Now it's still forwards, it's not dot backwards because we're still facing forwards. If we want to go backwards, we simply take a step away. So what I'm going to do is put minus direction. So we've calculated the same information, but now we're taking it away. We're just subtracting it from the position. So again, control S to save. Back into Unity. Press, there we go, it's compiling the code. Another good thing about Unity, by the way, is if you someone was playing the game, you're game testing it for you while you're writing code. Every time you press save, it will update live in the game. Um, so there we go. I've got forwards and backwards. Now at the moment, I can't turn. So I need to add some more code for making us turn. So just like before, I'm now going to use the um, right key and left key. So if you notice, I've now broken this. Because I copy and pasted, we've now got a missing brace. This is the most common mistake people make they don't have the right amount of opening and closing braces or the right amount of opening and closing brackets, usually due to clumsy typing. Okay, so again, rather than me typing it all out, I'm just going to copy and paste code from what I've written earlier. So I'm saying my direction, so this code up here, is equal to 10 times time dot delta time. So again, same as before, how fast is the game running? And I must multiply in that by 10, so this is the speed of our direction. Um, I'm then saying transform.rotate, so we're just taking the rotation of the object, I'm leaving x and z as it is, but I'm rotating around the y-axis, the up axis, and it's in its own local space. So it's going to add whatever this value is. The reason I've created a direction variable is if we want to change the speed of how fast you rotate. So it's just something you can experiment with. Um, so I'm now just going to do this again. But this time I'm obviously going to go left arrow. Um, and this time direction. I'm going to just put minus 10 instead. So again, really the direction value at the moment we're not really using. It's, we, we didn't have to declare it globally. It's just something we might come into later. Okay, so back into Unity, we can now see that we should be able to rotate our capsule. This is the reason I put the checker pattern on. Otherwise, you wouldn't see it rotating. So now when we move, there we go. We can see we are now walking in a direction. Now, the capsule is just a placeholder. Later on, we will replace it with an actual character if we need to. But again, look, we're still going through walls. That is absolutely no good at all. So what we're going to do is, on our capsule, I'll just stop playing. If you make changes to your object while the game is running, it won't save those changes. As soon as you stop running it, it goes away. Just to prove that, if I press play on the game, 
I'm going to add something called a rigid body. So the rigid body's now been added. When I press stop playing, rigid body's gone. So do, do make sure you stop your game when you're making changes. So I'm going to add the rigid body. The rigid body is just we're adding a physics object. So if we notice we've got something called a capsule collider. If I click on that, um, is it showing us? Let's just zoom right in on it. Don't know if we can see it. I'll turn that off, didn't mean to. There we go, we can see these green lines. That's that's its collision mesh, how solid it is. Um, we're not going to stick with it for a reason I shall now demonstrate. If we're playing and I go a bit too quick, we can fall over. We don't want to fall over. So I'm going to get rid of the capsule collider. I'm just going to remove it, add component, and I'm going to add a box collider. Now Unity is clever enough to know how big the box collider needs to be. Sometimes though you might want to change the size of it a little bit. You might want to make it a little bit wider so it doesn't fall over as easy. Um, I'll leave that to your experimentation in a little while. So now when I press play, we are now a lot more stable. So we're not falling over. You could still be knocked over. Okay, so we've now got we've now got um, a, a playable character. What I want to do though is make this first person. This is the real reason I wasn't too bothered about an object right now. I'm going to grab the camera. I'm going to pull the camera until it's almost on top. So let's just zoom in. Let's click on camera. I pressed F by the way to zoom in. It's to focus on the object. So I'm putting the camera in about the middle. I'm going to come to side view. I'm going to bring the camera down to roughly where the eyes would be. So again, this is a two meter tall person. So that's why I brought it a bit lower than you probably expect. If you pull it back too far, you can see um, but that'll do just fine. So now um, the camera's aligned with the person. But if we press play, we're going to wander off. So there we go, we've left it behind. I want to stick it to it. Now once upon a time you have to write lots of clever code, but all we need to do is drag the camera onto the capsule. It's now been parented, just like we did with the walls. So wherever the capsule goes, the camera goes too. So when I press play, we are now a first person dungeon crawler game. Um, the sky's a bit bright, don't like that sky, doesn't look very dungeon-y, so I'm going to click on the camera. It says over here, um, do we want to be skybox or back or colour? We will do skyboxes later, but for now, solid colour. I'm going to click on the blue, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. There we go, so I've made my camera a bit darker. And again, this is where I probably want to play with the lighting as well. So we've now got a very simple playable character with just a little bit of code. And we shouldn't be falling over too much. Now, I do want to add something else. These shadows are really dark. You know, that'd be great if you want to hide something in there. Uh, I'm just not saying it's great for the actual gaming experience. So what I'm going to do is come into top view. I've already got one light, which I'm going to leave exactly where that is. But I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to have two lights. Now, obviously, it's got really bright now. I don't want it really bright. Uh, I'm just going to move it over so we can see our two lights. So light one, light two. Just going to move that up there. Um, but now I'm going to come onto our light and we'll turn it down a bit so it's not as bright. Oh, we'll turn it too low there. I'm going to change its colour a little bit. So again, I'm still going to go with a slight blue. I'm going to rotate it very slightly. So if I rotate this this way, it should put a little bit of light into the shadow area. Okay, I'm just checking my settings. I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. So now we can see, do you know what mistake I've made? Proving the point. So now we can see in the sharp, in the dark shadowy areas. Um, again, lighting and camera position is really important to game playing. When I press stop, my second camera's gone because I hadn't pressed stop before I started adding more, ca or more lights. Sorry, not camera. Okay, so that's the end of the first part of lesson two. I'm going to stop there, give you time to go and add your code, make your character playable, experiment a little bit. Does your level feel all right? You might want to go back and make some change to your level layout now that you can walk around. Okay, so I'll stop there and we'll be back for lesson two, part two, shortly.